That was the best Nintendo Direct of all time. I'm still sitting here in complete and utter awe from the jaw-dropping graphics to the release dates to the fact that we're actually getting a new Metroid game today. I mean, this was seriously my favorite Nintendo Direct of all time, at least personally. But let's talk about the good and the bad. Starting off, though, I just have to talk about the fact that holy heck did it feel like this was completely directed towards retro fans in all the best ways. By the way, I'm Dreamcast Guy. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. At the beginning of this, I kind of went in with low expectations. I was kind of just hoping to get a bit of extra raw gameplay for Breath of the Wild 2 Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And to be honest, we did get that. We actually got a surprising amount of gameplay for it. But beyond that, we also got freaking the reveal of the long-rumored Metroid Prime remake. It's called Metroid Prime Remastered. It is the original GameCube game, but it looks like it is completely rebuilt. The graphics are fantastic. They directly said that they have fixed the controls to be more modern. The original game was controlled with a single stick. Now you can play it twin stick shooter style, you know, like a normal current game. I'm very excited about this. I'm definitely going to beat it tonight and review it. In fact, I'm going to beat it with my original strategy guide. But they also revealed something that personally makes my brain melt. I am obsessed with the original Game Boy. I'm actually a big Game Boy collector. I've got hundreds of Game Boy games. I beat them over and over and over again. I even have a Game Boy wallet. But I have been curious to see if they would add Game Boy to the Nintendo Switch Online service. Well, they're finally doing it, and the opening set of games are all bangers. Freaking Kirby, Tetris, freaking Link's Awakening, which is one of my favorite Zelda games, even stuff that has multiplayer. If there is a game you want to play with a friend of yours, there is local and online co-op for all the Game Boy games. You can also use different filters, which means if if you want it to look like the original Game Boy screen with like a green backdrop, you can do that, but you can also make it look like the Game Boy filter cover. There's also a bunch of Game Boy Color games in this, and if you have the expansion pass, they're adding, oh my god, I'm so happy about this, they're adding Game Boy Advanced games, including Golden Sun, the original Fire Emblem. Minish Cap, which is one of the most obscure and kind of lost classic Zelda games. This is freaking awesome, and I cannot wait to play these games online with people. I mean, I'm this is so freaking great. But getting past that, let's talk about some new stuff, shall we? So first and foremost, I have to talk about the fact that the one downside of this presentation was kind of an it's an issue that personally I have with a lot of these big conferences and stuff they do these days, which is that, you know, about 20% of this was talking about DLC. I mean, a lot of these games now, they try and sell you the game and then they have to sell you the season pass. So we got a deep dive into a new Mario Kart expansion pack. It looks like we got another bunch of DLC for Fire Emblem Engage, which is going to basically add new emblems, which are like uh, the magic spells and special attacks. It looks like we're getting new DLC for Splatoon 3 which I am going to be playing that. I do like Splatoon 3 quite a bit and new DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Okay, you know, I'm not hating. I'm just saying that this kind of stuff to me mildly drags down the pacing of an otherwise big, cool show. In fact, let's just skip to the end for a second and talk about Breath of the Wild 2, which of course now is officially called Tears of the Kingdom. Oh man, this trailer was intense, and I feel like not only did it show us a lot of new story, a lot of new cutscenes, a lot of better looks at the world of Hyrule and how we're going to be able to fly, including flying machines and what looks like buildable cars, I was actually struck by the fact that this looks so identical to to Breath of the Wild. Now, I mean that as a compliment, in that this is still sticking to that original tone, that original vibe, that original love for the game. It does feel like this is truly just Breath of the Wild 2. Man, I'm so excited for that game. They also confirmed it is not getting a delay. It is still coming out on May 12th, which is just a couple days after my birthday. And yes, indeed, I'm going to buy it. 
Now, let me talk about some RPGs because we got a ton of role playing goodness in this, including weird games that I had not heard of, weird detective games. But here's the two that definitely struck me immediately Sea of Stars. This game is essentially Chrono Trigger 2. I mean, it is so aesthetically similar to the original Chrono Trigger. I think the musical composer is the guy who worked on Chrono Trigger. And I mean this truly, it looks spectacular. I've been following the Twitter account for Sea of Stars now for I think about a year and they keep just tweeting out bits of gameplay, tiny teases, and I mean every single scrap of it looks like a true classic late 90s RPG in the most brilliant fashion possible. Well, they finally gave us a release date, August 29th, and we're getting a demo today. I am going to play the hell out of that demo. They also are giving us a demo for freaking Octopath Traveler 2. I'm sorry I'm kind of getting sputtered on my words here. I'm honestly just kind of overloaded. This is so good. Octopath Traveler 2, though, looks fantastic. That's obviously coming at the end of the month here. If you didn't play the original Octopath Traveler, it's basically eight different characters, a big magical journey across a mystical land, but each of the characters is very, very different. A thief, a bandit, a mercenary, a magician, a dancer, and all of them have to come together to save the world world, but for very different reasons. But what makes it fun is that you get a chance to pick which characters you want to play first. And it makes for a very unique build your own adventure vibe to it that definitely works. Now, next up, I was very happy to see this uh, Dead Cells DLC, Return to Castlevania. I actually only beat Dead Cells for the first time ever a couple weeks back. During the winter break, I was sort of just digging in my backlog, and I finally played a bunch of Dead Cells on the Nintendo Switch, and finishing it was a freaking treat. I love Dead Cells, so the fact that they're doing an official crossover with Castlevania so I can battle Dracula and enjoy all that retro music, I am freaking on like Donkey Kong. Now, I want to talk about the fact that they did show off quite a bit of remasters in this. A We Love Katamari collection, which is uh, Katamari 2 way back in the day. Advanced Wars 1 and 2 is finally coming out on April 21st. Of course, there is the Byten Kato's HD remasters. This is one of the most obscure and random GameCube card RPGs. I happen to have beaten it back in the day, but it's also one of those games that I kind of just assume that nobody else in the world but me knows about. They're bringing back Byten Kato's? I mean, that is just absolutely insane. Next up, two completely new games that are both coming relatively soon. Pikmin 4 is coming out in July, and that seems pretty great. Uh, I liked Pikmin back in the day, but I'm kind of curious what about this is going to be new. In the trailer that showed off a new little dog creature, it's like a pet you seem to have, a big alien pupper that lets you put your Pikmin on its back. You can ride around on it. Now, if you haven't played Pikmin, the gimmick is basically that you get these like little sentient olives and you use them as an itty bitty army to kill bugs and open doors and try and rip up giant roots and stuff like that. Um, the games are very fun. They're surprisingly addictive. And I will say sometimes they're surprisingly hard. Uh, so I'm great. I'm very happy to see Pikmin 4. Now this other game, I'm not super into myself, but I can tell it's going to be good, which is Bayonetta Origins, which is playing as Bayonetta before she's Bayonetta. It's like a weird RPG that's very, very colorful. It certainly seems interesting, but I mean, it's one of those games that I'm not really a Bayonetta fan, so I'm not probably going to buy it, but that is coming out here, I think, in three weeks, and that's pretty dang cool. Let me glance here at my notes. Yeah, that's everything. We got a new Professor Layton game teased. We got a new Fantasy Life game, which is like a Stardew Valley style adventure. A new Samba de Amigo. This is one of those directs that was just so jam-packed. I was taking notes as fast as possible, and I still missed some stuff, some teasers, some little bits of fashion games or <laughs> more dumb Disney stuff here and there. But overall, I would definitely give this an A. Not quite an A+, plus because there were a couple dips in the middle. Some people were trying to tweet out boring until Twitter broke. But for the most part, 
I am definitely on board with all of this. I am so happy, and I'm definitely about to immediately start playing a bunch of Game Boy games and Metroid Prime Remastered. So thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch my Metroid Prime Remaster review, be ready for it. I'm definitely going to plow through that game like a cocaine-filled hooker, and then I'll post that video. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Oh my god. Game Boy, baby. Game Boy! <laughs>